Shields up, Iron Breakers. Welcome to Hell Divers 2. And today I'm going to be bringing you my beginner's guide to this game so that you too can bring freedom and democracy to the galaxy. Now, before we go any further, this right here is actually a video that I'm going to be pausing as we go through the guide because I needed to be able to play the game without having to worry about providing commentary because as you will soon find out, things can get very chaotic very, very fast when it comes to Helldivers 2. But anyway, we're going to start things off by giving you a brief introduction of the services that you're available to on the ship. Right here, we have the Stratagem Hero minigame. This is for all those of you that are still struggling to deploy uh, your stratagems in the field of battle. You can kind of do a little bit of practice here in the Stratagem Hero, which is an interesting little console. You just go in there, press the button, and it gives you a couple of things uh, for you to do if you want to practice your stratagem inputs. Next up, we have this right here. And in this terminal, this is your ship management terminal, allows you to change your ship name, as well as purchase new stratagem in the form of heavy machine guns, you know, rocket launchers, orbital bombardments, airstrikes, uh, anti-personnel minefields, a bunch of other stuff. Whereas here are passive effects for each of those stratagems that you have on the other side of things. So for instance, if you really like, you know, your airstrikes, you'll want to make sure that you upgrade the hangar on this side of things if you really like turrets you want to make sure to upgrade the robotics workshop on this side of things in order to upgrade uh your passive bonuses for your stratagems you're going to be needing this currency right here which are the samples and the samples that are available to you depend on the difficulty of the missions that you tackle more on that a little bit further ahead whereas when it comes to buying new stratagems you're going to need this specific currency right here which is called requisite chips but that is the purpose of this particular terminal on your ship it is to be able to fully upgrade your ship and all of that stuff now this terminal right here is where you go and you can choose your primary weapon secondary weapon as well as your armor helmet and cape armor currently is the only thing that actually has any stats on it and then in here where it says character you can come in and you can customize your character you can have her be a female or a male hell diver or whatever else you happen to identify with they give you you know two different voice packs actually four different voice packs uh, that you can put onto the character. You can also choose your victory pose, your player card, title, emotes, all of that good stuff. Then you also have a booster section. Now, currently, I don't have any booster, but these are things that you can get from the battle pass as well as the, the both on the free side of the battle pass as well as on the paid side of the battle pass, which if we actually jump into the game here, I can actually show you guys that if we press R, you can see that there will be uh, somewhere around here there should be a booster so this one and it will give you effects such as hell divers come out of the hell pod fully stocked of ammo grenades and stems which is pretty useful but in this case we don't have any of that yet so the video will reflect that once we actually deploy planet side but this is where you would equip your booster if you had one Next up, we're going to be going over to the Galactic War Table. And I really want you to pay attention to this because this particular part of the game is going to be dynamic, which means things are going to change as the game progresses. So the idea that the developers have here, which is something that I've mentioned in my first impressions video, is that you are going to be able to basically change the course of the history of the game depending on how well we all do as a community this means that the story of the game is not set in stone and it will evolve as the game evolves this isn't always online game it is a live service game and the narrative will be defined by the community so right now we have the automatons on the left side and we have the terminids on the right side but there is space in there for potentially like a third faction maybe even a fourth faction who knows on how many fronts we're going to be fighting this war so these are the automaton planets as you can see the community is currently working on liberating ubanea because we want to stop the advance of the automatons because i get a feeling that if we don't stop them pretty soon the automatons are going to start advancing further and further towards our planet this again this is determined by the developers there's a human actually uh, you know deciding the future of the war as things work out so if the community is able to liberate planets then the war is going to work out in our favor and then maybe they'll counterattack, or maybe they'll back off or if the community is not liberating planets potentially our enemies are going to feel emboldened and things are going to advance forward but basically there's going to be plenty of planets to engage in combat in plenty of different sectors 
For instance, right now the community is working on liberating Angel's Venture. Actually, by the time this video gets released, uh, the community will have liberated Angel's Venture because I remember that when I finished this mission was when that objective was uh, met, which by the way, you can see the objectives over there where it says major order. This is like what the developers would like us to do, but it is our decision if we want to engage in that or not. So right now we wanted to free this and we've achieved that goal. I'm assuming that pretty soon we're going to be getting another community goal. As a matter of fact, if I go into the game right now, we can actually check what that goal might potentially be. Right now we don't have anything. So if I actually go on to the um if I actually go on to the Galactic War map and we pan out, there's nothing. We only have our personal order, which is a different side objective that we can go and do, and it'll give us 15 medals for doing it. But yeah, so pretty soon we should be receiving our next major order, which will likely involve attacking the planets ahead of this one, or maybe even pushing back the automatons. We shall see if that is the case. This planet right here was actually under attack by the Terminids. It was 100% liberated before we liberated Angel's Venture. So the community is actually doing pretty well with completing with the major orders, which is pretty cool. Now, another thing that you guys will notice is as you choose the planet that you're going to be going on missions on, you are going to be able to choose a difficulty. I want you to pay attention to this portion of the screen. and You will see that difficulty, easy, trivial, so on and so forth. However, also pay attention to the sample section on the bottom of the video. As you can see, if you play on trivial, the only thing you have access to is green samples. If you play on easy, also green samples. If we go into medium, also only green samples. And only when you get into challenging, you start having access to orange samples. Uh, on a hard, it is also only orange samples, so I'm assuming maybe extreme or beyond the extreme is where you're going to be getting the purple samples, which are going to be important if you really want to upgrade the passive effects that you can get uh, for your ship and for your stratagems, which is kind of like how you really take care of business when you're planet side. Now we're going to be choosing a quest on challenging and i wanted to choose one that had heavy enemies because this is probably going to be one of the first difficulties that you guys are going to be facing off against and i want to show you a couple of techniques to deal with that so we're going to be taking on this mission of eliminating a bile titan now once you select the mission your ship is going to position itself in that specific location of the planet which is a pretty cool thing i appreciate the attention to detail that they've done here and it is something that is cool. But basically, once you do this, you can just go up to your help pod and you can start your deployment to the planet. But before we do so, I would like to call your attention to a couple of things in the options. Namely, the remember aim mode, which I have set to per weapon and remember weapon functions. What these two options are going to do is they're going to remember the setting that you had for the way in which you were aiming a specific weapon. Because you can aim in third person or you can aim in first person. And, you know, having the game remember that is going to make things maybe a little bit better for you. If you don't want to, you can also just turn that off. But personally, I like that. When it comes to weapon functions, it is things such as firing rate. You can choose the game to remember that stuff as well. So we're going to be jumping into our health pod. And this is where you start managing your deployment onto the planet. Now, in here, you are going to see that it is going to show you the main objective as well as a, uh, your extraction zone so fundamentally what you want to do is you want to complete your main objective and then exit to the extraction zone but also shows you an optional objective that you can choose to take on or not depending on how things are going planet side but like i said you know ideally you want to do your main objective and then extract or if you can do as many things as possible along the way so my plan is to deploy right there on top of the main objective because if we actually scroll back just a little bit here in the video you guys will see that we can go to the main objective and then from the main objective to the side objective and then from there to the extraction because that just makes one quick line right however the situation on field was quite quite different so we're going to be deploying here now, the reason I'm deploying there is because I'm trying to avoid enemies as much as possible before we head over to the um, before we head over to the the main target. Now, I wanted to just show you guys the uh, deployment phase where I picked my stratagems because our objective right here is to eliminate a bile titan. So I'm going to be taking some heavy weaponry. 
Now, we have a lot of selections here. At the beginning, you're probably only going to have this, which is the precision, precision orbital bombardment, as well as the machine gun. I've unlocked a couple of more things, which you should unlock whatever you prefer to play with. But fundamentally, one of the things that you are going to need is something to deal with heavy bugs. And in this case, we've picked the recoilless rifle because it is going to allow me to also tell you about uh, cooperative reloads and all of that good stuff, right? However... You might not have this available to you. One of the things that I would recommend most definitely before you tackle uh, missions that involve heavies. Let me just go over here to the to the stratagem screen. Before you do any missions that involve heavies, you want to make sure that you buy yourself uh, a gun that can deal with them. So one of those options is the expandable anti-tank. The problem with this one is that uh, you can only fire one rocket per minute. Uh, well, a little bit more than a minute because you have to basically keep sending these down. And their cooldown timer is 70 seconds. So, you know, you fire it once and then it's like, well, there it goes. It's done, right? However, if you shoot this into a heavy and you create a big enough opening, you can keep shooting on it. Because when it comes to the heavies in this game, they don't really have uh, a ton of HP. While they do have more HP than the other ones, it's not like they're super bloaty. It's just they have armor and you have to shoot in the weak spots Otherwise, you're going to have a rough time. Now, these are the, some of the two first weapons that you have. The one that I selected here is the recoilless rifle. Uh, before you have these options, dealing with the heavy is going to be a pain. You can kind of like dive behind them and hit them in this sack right here. But it's going to take you a very, very long time to kill them that way. So I would recommend maybe playing difficulties where the heavies don't show up until you can level up enough to get the expandable anti-tank or the recoilless rifle to be able to deal with heavy units. Now, like I said, I'm using this one because it has multiple ammunition. However, this one is also preferred if you are playing the co-op because you can have another player reload for you. I'll tell you how once we get into that portion of the video. But yeah, that is going to be the stuff that I'm going to be taking down. My airstrikes, my recoilless rifle, as well as a mortar sentry. In the mortar sentry is going to get me killed quite a few times, but that is part of the magic of Helldivers 2. You're going to be jumping in there, and you're going to be getting killed by your own weaponry. It comes with the territory, okay? So we're now deploying onto the field. And as we deploy, they're going to give us a little bit of control over the pod by the time we reach the final stages of approximation. Uh, however, there's no bugs here. There's nothing. So, boom. Here we are. Now, very important thing, notice what was the first thing that I did when I landed, because right now I'm playing solo, I crouched. The reasoning behind that is crouching appears to make enemies, uh, it appears to make it harder for enemies to spot where you are. Crouching, crawling, any of these things works, so keep that in mind. Now, I also deployed outside of the combat zone, because we're right at the edge of the map, so we're going to have to go back into the combat zone. Now, one of the first things that you want to do is you want to bring up your stratagems. And as you can see, the, the button for this, by the way, on controllers is going to be the left bumper or the L1. And on PC, it is going to be the control button. And then, in, or in order to input these directions on PC, you're going to be using WASD, which should be fairly familiar to anybody that plays mouse and keyboard. You can also use a controller on PC should you choose to do so. And on controllers, it is going to be your D-pad. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You just do this sequence of, uh, of motions and it is going to bring down the specific stratagem that you are going to ask. Now, in my case, I'm going to try and drop a SOS beacon. This is so that other players can join your game. I was not lucky, however. Nobody joined my game, and I had to do the mission completely solo. This game is quite simply much more fun when there are more players with you, so I would still recommend try to get a couple of friends to play with you, stuff like that. You're going to have a better time, but if you must play solo, this video will hopefully also help you with some of that stuff. So we're going to be deploying the SOS beacon right off the bat. Then immediately after that, you want to bring in your heavy weapon, which in our case is the recoilless rifle. So we're going to be summoning that. As you can see, these stratagems basically give you grenades that you throw, and these grenades serve as beacons to deploy 
the different things. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to drop down a supply. But an important thing about supplies, they are shared with your whole team. So if you call down a supply, it means that nobody else in your team can call out another supply for like two and a half minutes or three minutes or whatever the cooldown of this thing is. So keep that in mind before you're just summoning supplies willy-nilly. Only summon supplies when you actually need them. Don't just summon supplies because you feel like it because the cooldown of this is shared by your whole team. So, the recoilless rifle, as you can see, this is basically a rocket launcher. Before, actually, before we even get into that, we're going to be talking about the weapon modes, the firing modes. I had forgotten about that. There's a method to the madness here. So, as you can see, we now have access to this menu. If you keep your reload button pressed, which on PC is going to be R, on controller it is going to be square, or on the Xbox, that is the cross, not cross, X, the X button. And if you keep that pressed, you're going to be given this menu. Now, the thing in the bottom is basically a, a flashlight. I just always leave that on auto so that it turns it on when I'm in a dark place or whatever. It doesn't really matter that much. But the one on the right side that actually dictates a couple of things as to how your weapon works. So as you can see, we can go between auto or semi-automatic, which is basically single fire. Also, if you happen to have, say, a heavy machine gun, it is going to let you choose how fast you shoot. You can shoot faster and you get more recoil, or you can shoot slower and conserve your ammunition at the cost of, you know, you're dealing less damage per second because naturally your rifle is not firing as many rounds. Usually whenever I'm playing with a machine gun, I have it like set to maximum speed, but you know, just be aware that this is something that you can do and you're going to be able to change how each weapon functions, test it out, see which one you like the most. And this is why that setting, remember weapon settings matters because that is what this refers to. Once you set this, it is going to basically remember it throughout the rest of the match. Now, besides that, there's also the aim functionality, but I guess, uh, yeah, here it is. Once you aim, which is using the left trigger or the right mouse button, it is basically going to put you like this. It's going to zoom in a little bit. It's going to give you a targeting reticule. Now, I want you to pay attention to one thing. There's a little circle next to the targeting reticule, and that circle is where the gun is actually aiming. So the dot is what you, is what you are looking at. The circle is what the gun is aiming at. There's a little bit of a delay especially with heavier weapons. So as you turn, you will notice that sometimes the circle lags behind. That is where your weapon is actually aiming at. So keep that in mind while you're shooting. It adds a certain degree of realism to the whole thing, which is actually very much appreciated personally. I like it. I think that the third-person shooting mechanics in this game are way, way above a lot of the stuff that we see in the market. And then you have these different A modes. As you can see, you can swap into first person. The way you do this on PC is you press down on the middle mouse button. The way you do this on console is you press down on R3 or your right, um, right analog stick. Just press it down and it'll switch to this. And again, if you have it to remember uh, aim mode per weapon, it will stay like that until you change it back, which personally I like. So now let's talk about the recoilless rifle. This particular thing comes with two separate uh, items. It brings the rifle itself, which is already loaded with one missile. I'm actually trying to get to it, but it's a little bit glitchy because of the height. And then it comes with a backpack. Now, the cool thing about this weapon, the combo of the weapon and the backpack, you're going to need this backpack in order to reload this weapon. If you don't have the backpack, you can't reload the weapon. However, one of the things that I would recommend if you happen to be playing multiplayer with friends, this is something that I do with my friend all the time, he usually carries the rocket launcher, I carry the backpack, and whenever we need to deal with a heavy, you can actually latch on to your teammate, you can just walk up to him and press E in my case, which on console, not exactly sure what the interact button is, probably going to be X, uh, well not X, cross on PlayStation and A on Xbox, whatever, but basically you'll get a prompt whenever you have the backpack and your friend is... Uh, wielding the recoilless rifle and your character basically latches on to your friend's character and will automatically reload until you run out of ammunition in the backpack and that makes it so that you can fire this thing really really fast if you're playing solo however you can still reload it but it takes a very long time so you're going to have to look for openings in order to reload and i guarantee you'll be able to see me do that it was not a fun time that we had in this mission 
Now, the reason why it's important for you to bring down supplies at the very beginning of the mission is if you look to the bottom left-hand side here, you'll notice that we're sitting at three out of four grenades, two out of four stim packs. These are our heals, and usually you'll also not have the maximum ammunition on your main weapon. So when you drop, you're already at a bit of a disadvantage. That's why you need supplies so that you can go ahead and reload all of those things to maximum. See, right now, we're at 4 out of 4 when it comes to our healing items. We're at 4 out of 4 when it comes to our grenades. And we'll also have full mags on our main weapon. Now, the map. That is going to be the touchpad uh, button on your PlayStation controller. Or, I'm assuming it's going to be like, what is it called? The back button on the Xbox controller. Whichever one's the button on the left. Uh, and on PC, you're looking at tab. Now, if you actually then right click with your mouse, if you're on PC, that is going to allow you to set up like all types of um, all types of markers and stuff so that you can set those up and those become available for everyone to see. And they also show up on the compass on the top middle of the screen. They are important so that you can kind of like organize yourself because the map is not always available to you. You have to actually look at your watch, which prevents you from running and doing other things. So you have to use navigation points in the map in order to be able to figure out where you're going. Okay. Uh, in console, in order to do that, you're going to be using the D-pad, and I'm not exactly sure what is the button. I'm assuming it's going to be like A or cross, depending on what your controller is, but it should be fairly easy to figure out. You can also use the bumper buttons to zoom in and out of the minimap, whereas on PC, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out of the map. So you can see that our target should be somewhere in the vicinity of that orange circle. And I'm not exactly sure where that target is. We're just going to do a little bit of a light recon of the situation. And we can already see a couple of bugs. Now, another thing is, besides doing pings on the map and setting up, you know, spots for navigation, you can also do pings uh, that will inform your teammates of what is ahead of you. Now, on PC, this is done by pressing the Q key. And on the, on the controller, it is going to be a right bumper or the R1 button which informs you of what is there, like, because you can see it says Brute, Com Brute Commander, all of your team would be able to see this. Now, I'm going to be looking at the map, and my suspicion is that our target's going to be over there, on that red spot, because it's slightly bigger than the other one, and usually your targets tend to be where the most concentration of monsters is, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place uh, a, pin. a pin on the map there. So now we're still doing a little bit of recon here. And we spot a heavy. Heavy, northeast, 50 meters. So this is a problem because this is one of those monsters that you can't just kill uh, by using regular small arms fire. You're going to need a big weapon like the recoilless rifle that we have, or even an orbital bombardment, an aerial strike, all of that type of stuff. But at the same time, I notice, uh-oh, there's mobs. Now, notice how I pulled up the map, and you can see this red dot here. This indicates where enemies are. So if you hear noise around you, you want to pull up your map, because that way you'll be able to identify exactly where the noise is coming from, so that you can prevent getting swarmed without even realizing it. So at this point, I was like, maybe I'll just sneak around, because I don't want to engage these dudes so close to the heavy and the rest of the stuff on that base. So I was trying to, like, get away from them. But at the same time, I'm at the edge of the combat zone, which is not good. So then, oh, hi. How are you doing? So at this point, you want to bring in an airstrike, an orbital bombardment. You want to do something. You don't just want to start shooting willy-nilly, even though that's probably what I did. No, yeah, I, I was trying to bring up an airstrike but we were too close. Now, another thing, notice how it says there, bug breach detected. That is because if we actually just go back a little smidge here, you will notice that the second I opened fire on them, let me see if I can pause. This one started spewing out pheromones. Now, what this does is there's a bunch of bugs underground, and when somebody up top starts you can out pheromones, they all rise up from the ground. And basically this means we are going to get absolutely swarmed. Now in hindsight, I probably should have done this tutorial on an easier difficulty because it would have made things significantly simpler for me to explain, but this way you get an actual real life scenario, right? We're on difficulty four, which is challenging, which means we are going to get brutally swarmed. So in this situation, one of the things that you need to remember, your best friend, 
is the Superman Dive. Now, Superman Dive button on PC is Alt by default. I'd actually recommend potentially changing that. I use mouse button 4 and mouse button 5 for both diving as well as healing because these are going to be two things that you're going to be doing a lot. Now, the healing button is going to be V. On controller, healing button is up D-pad and the Superman Dive is pressed twice on circle or pressed twice on B, depending on which controller you happen to be using. These are your best friends when you're getting swarmed. And pretty soon you should see me start diving into the ground all over the place because that's just one of the best ways of doing things. So I'm backing away, creating some distance, throwing some grenades, basically trying to blast them open. But, you know, it's not going to be easy because there's a bunch of them. Right now I ran out of bullets. Another important thing when it comes to ammunition in this game, one of the reasons why you're going to be like, we're kind of should have just reloaded early rather than run out of ammunition. However, whenever you reload in this game, you basically throw away all the bullets in the magazine. You just throw them all away. So if you take one shot and reload, the rest of the bullets in that mag, they're gone. Okay? They're gone. This is not like Call of Duty where magically the bullets keep coming back. Uh-uh. And here... You throw, the, you throw the magazine away, the bullets go with it, just like it is in real life. This is why usually I will shoot until the end of the magazine to make optimal use of my mags. However, sometimes I'll also reload if the mag is like below half or something like that, just that I have a fresh mag. And this particular rifle, uh, you can have up to 10 mags with you, so it's a little bit more forgiving, but certain weapons will be less forgiving. So make sure to keep that in mind. We really landed on the edge of the map. So here I'm trying to get back to the map whilst also creating some distance. We healed right there. It's important that sometimes you might think, oh, let me get clear before I heal. No, just heal right in the middle of the mess, okay? Because the heal in this game is brutally powerful, okay? It will regen you while you are getting hit. On the other hand, if you keep running and keep getting hit and you never press the healing button, you're going to die. So again, we're just creating some distance. I think I was trying to bring down a stratagem, and here we go. We're going to call in a napalm airstrike. Now, notice how I dropped it right in front of me. This is very much, you know, not advisable if you can all, if you can avoid that. However, if you can't avoid that, well, that's too bad. But you want to drop it, and then you want to run in the opposite direction, which is what we're doing here. And then you want to dive. Like I told you, use the Superman dive, because that is going to clear a certain amount of distance, and it should clear us of the napalm strike, hopefully. Like Boom. Beautiful. Now, you can see that we've also aggroed the heavy. Not this one. This one's the Brood Commander. But the heavy is coming in on the right side right there. The heavy is going to be very annoying. One of the things that you want to try and get in the habit of whenever you're tangling with the heavy is you want to start dodging sideways right as it's about to hit you because that is kind of like how you avoid them. There's no other way of doing it. He has ungodly tracking, and he is going to track the crap out of you. Now, rocks are also going to be your best friend because sometimes he will ram himself into rocks and he'll slow down a little bit. That's why you see me playing ring around the rosy next to this rock. However, he just trampled through it it's because this rock has a slight inclination on the other side which is not perfect however i was also lucky here because the ai for this heavy kind of glitched out kind of sucks but it is what it is the ai for the heavy glitched out so he's just gonna stay chill over there and i'm gonna keep firing at this guy but i was constantly wary is, is he coming at me no okay good sounds good i'm gonna keep shooting at this guy are you coming at me now no all right i'm gonna keep shooting at this guy <laughs> However, naturally, if you had to, you would be diving and dodging and basically trying to avoid the big boy as much as you could. Now, as you can see, this guy summoned another two dudes, so we're going to bring in another airstrike. This is how you're going to have to deal with things, pretty much in real time. So, if you're not ready for the chaos of Helldivers 2, you're going to have a bad time, okay? This is the way the game is at all times. This is why I needed to pre-record the video so that I can pause and explain everything to you. You're going to have to basically deploy these stratagems on the fly and then avoid the potential, you know, fire from your own air, airstrikes because there is friendly fire. Also, be careful with your teammates, you know, because as your teammates get hit by your friendly fire, they're going to die. And as you can see, there's a number right here, number five. That is how many lives you have available. They're not really lives, they're reinforcements, but whatever. So we're going to bring out the recoilless rifle and we're going to shoot this guy right in the face. Now, shooting him in the face is not the best spot because he is armored. I was hoping I would punch through his armor, it didn't, so we have to get rid of these dudes, even though his AI still appears to get glitched, which is nice, because now I can just, like, sit back, hey, what's up, buddy? 
But don't worry about it. There's another example further ahead where we actually go and we have to punish one of these. So I'm going to shoot at his leg, but that was pretty much enough. He's had enough. He's done. It's over him. He's gone. So we cleaned house. Now we're going to be reloading our recoilless rifle, which is going to take a very long time. But hey, it's better than not being able to reload it, right? And we're good to go. So now, once again, we should be uh, checking in our map, but I'm just very curious to see what these particular structures are, because sometimes you will find side objectives like this. So in here, I'm sending my eagles to rearm. This is because whenever it comes to the planes that do the airstrikes, if you actually notice, when I bring up my stratagems here, you'll see that we only have one napalm airstrike and one eagle airstrike. That's because you get two of each airstrikes and then the ships need to go back and rearm. So I'm sending them to rearm early so that I have those two available. The way that you do that is you just, you just use the eagle rearm stratagem and that will fix things for you. So that's going to send them out. And that is going to basically put them on cooldown for like two and a half minutes or whatever it is. However, we found a side objective, which is this tower structure. So the way that you solve this, and you can see the sub-objective in the map right there. The way that you solve this is just go up to a terminal. And it is going to pull up this tower. The thing is, whenever it comes to these objectives, is that you're eventually going to get swarmed. Because there's always enemies kind of moving in on your position. So we're going to deploy the resupply to make sure that we have supplies available to us while we're doing this thing. Now I'm going to move a little bit further ahead in the video because the tower takes a little bit to go all the way up. Once the tower goes up, you're going to see here that you're going to need to aim the tower to a specific position. There is a giveaway. I was actually trying to do this without even looking at the terminal, but I kind of messed it up. There is a giveaway, which you guys will see here when you're aligning these towers. So we're going to be pressing the button and then pay attention on the right side of things, which is where the terminal is. It's going to make a different noise. Ba doop. You hear that? When you hear that noise, that means that you've hit the jackpot. So when that is done, you're going to go in. Now, we deployed also a turret, which is currently firing at the enemies that are coming up. And I already know I'm going to have problems because I spot a heavy in the middle of them. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to try to punish that leg, which we hit, but we also got completely destroyed. Now, very important thing. When you die... Or when somebody on your team dies, you don't automatically respawn. If you're playing solo, you do respawn automatically. But if you're playing in a team, people who die do not get instantly resummoned. If you want to summon them, you're going to have to go ahead and use a stratagem, which is the reinforce stratagem, which will be available when you are playing in multiplayer. Another important thing... As you are falling down, you have a chance potentially to land on top of one of these heavies and you will just kill it. But it's not easy. And the downside of it is that if you miss, you're probably going to die. So keep that in mind. Risk, reward, all of that, right? As you can see, we didn't really have the option to do that because our uh, hell pod actually landed over there. So I have to basically run back to my body, pick up my rifle, pick up my backpack, and we're going to have to reload it because we're going to have to deal with a big heavy. Like I said, this is chaos at all times, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to hit that leg. I think I actually missed that, which is really bad. We're going to try and gain some distance from the enemy here. He destroyed the building, which caused a bit of a shockwave. But he's also stuck up there, so he, can't, he can kind of jump down, but he's at that ledge there, and I'm just like, all right, I'm going to blast you right in the ass. Boom! Right there, beautiful. So he's probably going to die no matter what at this point because he's like, he's leaking green fluid and stuff. They eventually do bleed out, kind of. But it's still going to take him a while and I don't really want to take too many chances, so we're going to blast him again. He's still alive. It's pretty impressive, so we're going to have to once again get some distance and reload. But since we've hit that leg quite a few times, he's also going to be slowed down because he's going to be hurting. Because depending on where you hit the monsters, it also changes their behavior. As you can see, he's kind of limping. Now we're going to blast him again. He's still alive. However, notice that that leg no longer has any armor. So at this point, you can use small arms fire on it. 
you can also shoot him in the ass. And, you know, at this point, you no longer need a heavy weapon, but you could just use a heavy weapon to do it faster, but there you go. He's gone. He is down. So we punished him, and now we can go and we can complete our objective. We now, once again, have another bug breach, so we're going to bring in an napalm instantly. You got to, like basically be ready at any given time also whenever you jump dodge or whenever you do the superman dive you're going to be able to fire from a prone position make use of it as you can see right here then you can get back up and you're good to go napalm is really good because it creates that firewall between you and the monsters so they all end up burning and stuff while they're coming at you now we're going to activate the objective and we're going to be moving on so as you can see We've completed a secondary objective, and one of the cool things is whenever you complete secondary objectives, you gain requisition chips so that you can upgrade your stratagems, you gain more EXP, sometimes you will find rare materials at these locations, so you know, it's pretty cool. However, this video is extending itself quite significantly, so I just want to call out your attention to one more thing. If you see... Over there, you see this little light pillar? Over there? Wait, it's going to show again. This light pillar over here, and notice how it's going to glow. That right there is uh, what me and my friends, we call it a shiny. But basically, there's going to be loot in that location. Now, this could be an another weapon that you can use throughout this mission. It can be requisition chips. It can be samples. It can be medals that you can use on the battle pass. It can be super credits, which is the premium currency of the game that you can acquire by just playing the game. So... Usually, if you're able to, I would highly recommend going to these positions and collecting that stuff. But when you are playing solo on this difficulty, not necessarily the easiest thing to do. So now I'm going to move us a little bit ahead to when we went to our main objective. So once we got to the main objective, we were kind of once again swarmed by enemies. So we're going to be bringing in Eagle Napalm Strikes. Once again, you're going to have to master this ability to thrive on chaos. When it comes to Helldivers, so just be ready for that. We are still playing solo, as you can see. Uh, at this point, we still haven't died since that first death that we had. We only have two Eagle Airstrikes. I'm going to risk it, but I'm going to call in an additional Recoilless Rifle. Now, the reason I'm calling in that Recoilless Rifle is in the event that I run out of ammunition, there'll be a fresh backpack there, and also there will be another Recoilless Rifle shot. Uh, because the other recoilless rifle is going to be already loaded. So I can just toss this one, pick up the new one, and I will have another shot ready to go. Because at this point, I already know that my target is in here, because I've already scouted my target. And you guys will see him right there. You can kind of see him. I'm going to drop in my mortar sentry. This was a really bad position. I should not have placed it there. But... I really wanted to get the engagement started. You can see our target right there. I'm going to try to land an aerial strike on him, aiming that a little bit up. Boom. That should land directly on him. Boom. I also detonated a little mine that was in there that's going to slow me down, which is fine. Now we're going to get swarmed, and we have our enemy coming straight at us because he's a big boy. So at this point, I just need to basically blow the recoilless rifle on him as fast as I possibly can. I'm waiting for him to reveal him a little bit more of himself to me. And right there, we're going to call in a second air strike, which will hopefully land on it. We got a bug breach. There's the airstrike, direct hit. Not that it matters because he's got a really heavy weapon, and he was able to just kill us with the bile. Now at this point, I'm probably going to try to land right on top. I was, I wanted to try to land right on top of him, but it didn't really work out because our hell pot was deployed all the way back here. Now keep in mind, because it's easy to forget, you no longer have your heavy weapon. That's gone, back where your corpse was. So you have to go back to your corpse to recover your weapon. And that's what we're trying to do. However, this whole area is getting swarmed out here, as you can see. And our objective is moving away. So this is when things got really bad. But if you're a hell diver, and especially if you're an iron breaker, you know better than to give up. So you're gonna collect your ammunition, soldier, even though I failed to collect my recoilless rifle. But then again, that recoilless rifle doesn't really have a loaded, um, a loaded missile in the chamber. So we don't need that one. Remember how we dropped the other one further ahead? We're still gonna pick this one up. 
Oh, actually, this one does have one in the chamber, which is good. So we're going to go ahead, blast him. But now we're out of ammo. But remember how we dropped this one here. This one already has one in the chamber, so excuse me. I'll take that. That gives us another rocket. Going to blast him in the face again. And now we're going to move over here behind this rock. Going to play Ring Around the Rosy. Reload. Luckily, the enemies are still trying to figure out the pathing to come around to us. We have another rocket. Blast him. Boom. Basically, blast him with reckless abandon. Once again, we're fighting at the edge of the map, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Hell divers have cold blood, which is why we're able to reload in the face of danger. Once again, we've gotten another rocket. We got hit by the barbs of his legs right there. Gonna heal up. Blast him again. It didn't fully reload because we had to move. So we're gonna have to find, once again, a little bit more space. Reload. And I believe that at this point, a heavy is going to join the chase, which is gonna be annoying as hell. Blast him again. This is all about creating space and reloading. Creating space and reloading. And having a big, heavy weapon to help you out. So we're going to swap over our backpack, if you remember, because we dropped the other one specifically for when this happened. Now we are going to have to reload at some point, so we're going to do it here. We've gotten some distance. However, at this point, we're kind of uh, getting pretty swarmed here, so we are probably going to die dodging away. Going to call in a napalm airstrike right on top of us to clear the field a little bit. And we got him with the napalm airstrike. Now at this point, I got myself involved in a whole lot of uh, complications, which we don't really need to go over, but suffice, suffice to say that, you know, just dropping napalm strikes on myself. And there's a big heavy boy over there, and that heavy boy is going to make my life living hell. However... The way that we ended up dealing with him, at this point we died. Wait, I wanted to show you guys how we dealt with him. We were trying to reload here to deal with the heavy. But it wasn't happening. We were getting swarm. So I moved over here. Tried to get some stuff done. He was just completely abusing us. We got killed. And at this point I was like, alright. Let's see if we can hell dive right on top of him. We did have that opportunity, and squash. We got him. He's dead. However, we ended up landing on top of all the other enemies. But we did kill the big threat, which is good, because now we can just kind of like Superman dive our way to safety. Hell divers never quit. Keep that in mind, gentlemen. But yeah, at this point, I roamed the map for a little bit. I wanted to do some more side objectives. But I ended up getting completely swarmed because of the difficulty and all that. So we're going to be moving over to our extraction area any second now. Because at the end of the day, if you can go and you can complete a bunch of side objectives, you can go ahead and you can do that. However, if that is the difference between you completing the mission by extracting and not, my recommendation is actually extract. Because it also feels better. And I think you get more rewards for it too. But as you can see, whenever the extraction time is about ready, you can see that blue pillar in the distance. That is where you have to go to for extraction. Now here you can see that I was being greedy and I was like, oh, but there's a shiny over there. I'm going to give me that shiny. You better believe it. Even though I only have one reinforcement, I love getting shinies. So we're going to go over there. We're going to collect that. There's also... There's also a bug pit uh, in the background there. We could do that if we were in multiplayer and had some help. But solo, I wasn't going to risk it. There's a heavy over there. We're going to go ahead and we're going to drop an eagle airstrike on him. Bloop. I was trying to cook that grenade a little bit. Sometimes you can get them to stick on them, but it doesn't always happen. So that should hit him. It did hit him, but it didn't deal enough damage to kill him, because usually one airstrike is not enough for the heavies. However, the heavy is like moving back to the position that we were in, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to go collect this real quick. And that was some requisition chips, and now we're going to leave. So, eventually I started backing myself up all the way to the, um, how do we even kill this guy? I think we dropped an airstrike right on top of myself or something like that. We ended up killing that one. But regardless of that, you guys get the idea of how to deal with heavies by now. 
Yeah, I was calling in an airstrike. And I think that's how we killed him. Yep, the airstrike got him. And we're all, like, busted up and we ended up dying anyway. No reinforcements. I mean, we have one reinforcement, the final one. And there's a bug breach, and at this point I was like, screw all this, I'm going to extraction. So we just started running it, we booked it, all the way to extraction. And now, when you get to extraction, you're going to be required to input a code. We still haven't activated that code because I'm setting up a mortar sentry. Because I know that th this place is going to get swarmed. Now, I was trying to get it to, like, be on top of the mountain. That didn't really work out, but I was like, fine, whatever. So you come up to the terminal, interact with it. Put in your extraction code, and you're pretty much good to go. And at this point, you just got to survive. That's it, to survive. So I'm going to be bringing out the recoilless rifles, supply beacons, everything. And the only thing that I have right now is one napalm airstrike. So we're going to go ahead and deploy that instantly. Now we're going to pick up whatever we can. And right now, it's all a matter of survival. You gotta survive for two minutes. Actually, one minute and 30 seconds. Insects coming in from all fronts. But it's all good. We're gonna kill them bugs. We're gonna bring the war to them. We're gonna bring freedom and democracy to all of these socialist insects. Okay? <clears throat> Socialist bugs. Communist bugs. Whatever. I, I don't know. I'm not a politically inclined person. I don't care about any of that. <laughs> but we need freedom and democracy, goddammit! So as you can see, I'm trying to keep them away from the mortar turret, because otherwise they can go over there and destroy it. And so long as their attention is focused on me, the mortar turret is just having their her way with it. However... The problem is that sometimes the mortar is going to hit you as well. Going to pick up some rare samples along the way. So you got to be very careful to stay away from the bugs. We are now 30 seconds away. And you can hear the heavy coming down. And I was like, oh no. And the thing is, you need to be close. You need to be close to the extraction spot. Otherwise, they cancel the extraction. Blasting the heavy here. The heavy punishes us very badly and ends up actually killing us. Actually, what killed us here might have been the mortar because the mortar was trying to shoot the heavy. However, at this point, I'm like, I got to play it safe. As you can see, too far from distractions, shuttle aborting. That's because we're getting coming in right now. And now back to resuming the extraction. We got five seconds that we got to survive. I'm not even attempting to take out that heavy because we just got to leave. You don't have to kill everything that is in there. You just have to stay around the extraction zone because once the pelican lands, you can just go inside it. Now, very important, do not stand in the landing area because if you do, okay, you're going to be a pancake diver. You're not going to be a hell diver anymore. So stay away from it. Also, stay away from its jets because they deal damage. They burn, okay? So, stay away enough that it can land without hitting you. It'll bring in a cannon to shoot stuff and whatnot. Now, clear a corridor into that door and go in there. Congratulations, Haldiver. You've completed your assignment. Hopefully, all of these tips will be useful for you in your future hell diving endeavors. And if you guys enjoyed this video, hit it up with a like Subscribe, bell notification icon, and all of that jazz for freedom and democracy across the galaxy. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.